Get Busy Living or Get Busy Dying is an iconic line in what is arguably one of the greatest films of the past 30 years, Shawshank Redemption. That line is first spoken by the central character Andy, who has been wrongly imprisoned for murder, and it is spoken to his fellow inmate and friend Red, played by Morgan Freeman. The line is repeated by Red towards the end of the film, when after more than 40 years behind bars, he is released on parole and is struggling to adapt to life without walls as a free man. The film then shows him looking in the window of a pawn shop. Before him lies a selection of guns, and so uncomfortable is he in his newfound freedom that he actually contemplates buying a gun, committing a crime, just so that he can go back to prison and the locked-up life he had grown accustomed to for more than half of his life. I thought of this when reading today's Gospel and Jesus' words about light and darkness and how it is entirely possible for us to choose to dwell in the darkness rather than come out into the light. Morgan Freeman's character has become so accustomed to life in prison, he has become so at home in it, that he doesn't know how to think, act or live like a free man. He had accommodated himself to being a prisoner for so long that he no longer knew what it meant to be a free man. He had dwelt so long in the darkness of prison that when faced with freedom, he preferred prison life. Only because of the hope placed in his heart by his friend Andy, who had by then escaped from that prison, only then was he able to decide that he had to get busy living, leaving behind the prison life, his attachment to it and his longing to go back there where things were more comfortable, but where he was not free. Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father not to condemn us in our sins, and to throw us into prison, but to set us free, to save us, give us a new life, an eternal life, and to enable us, as the second reading today puts it, to live the good life, as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. But Jesus warns us that there is a battle ongoing between the heavenly forces of light and the diabolic and sinful forces of darkness. And that darkness can be alluring because it requires little effort, promises so much, and obscures for us who we are in Christ and what great great things he has in mind for us, if we would just cooperate with him. We have arrived at one year since the lockdowns of this pandemic began. It has been a long and difficult year for us all. Imagine, if you can, that tomorrow an announcement was made by the governments of the world that the COVID-19 virus had disappeared, no one was getting sick anymore, No longer need we fear contracting the virus or passing it on. Imagine that they tell us that we need never think about that virus again and that all the restrictions would keep us virtual prisoners in our five-kilometer bubbles are gone forever. That would be good and welcome news indeed. Now imagine you had a friend who though he has heard this great news, continued to live in the same way as he did under lockdown. He has become so used to living a locked down, diminished and pandemic life that he has grown to like the hours he spends online scrolling through Facebook, playing video games and binge watching Netflix. He has become accustomed to staying away from others and of not venturing out much beyond walking the dog 
within a stone's throw of his own house. Wouldn't we think that there is something not quite right with him? Wouldn't it be a strange thing to prefer the lockdown life over the freedom that is part and parcel of normal life? Wouldn't it be a charitable thing for us to take our friend aside and try to make him see sense? Jesus, however, warns us that there are some who prefer the comfort of the kingdom of darkness and sin to the glory and freedom of his kingdom of light. On these grounds is sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. Now in this great battle between light and darkness, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, we must not get the idea that these are equal and opposite powers. Opposing they certainly are, but not equal. And it is the same in the natural world. St. Francis of Assisi said, All the darkness in the world cannot overcome the light of a single candle. Light and darkness cannot exist together. But while light will always drive back the darkness, the darkness cannot drive back the light. Its only hope of success is to have the light extinguished. Spiritually speaking, we have within us, since baptism, the light of Christ. Christ, who said of himself, I am the light of the world, says of his disciples, that's us, you are the light of the world. His light is in us, but we can choose darkness, choose sin. And we can do that so maliciously at times that it can even extinguish that light so that darkness can come rushing upon us. And if we live with that darkness long enough, we might find it hard to turn to Christ the light, to have our light restored by him. We can become so habituated to dwelling in darkness that we have no eyes for the light. And we can be forgetful that we are children of the light, made to dwell forever in the kingdom of light above. Each of us, probably daily, compromises in some way with darkness and deeds of darkness. We do that because we have a weak human nature prone to sin. To compromise with darkness is one thing. But to accommodate it, to allow it to dwell in us, to set up home in us, to settle ourselves down comfortably into it, that's quite another thing. And that is unfortunately what many Christians have done. That we have fallen into sin, even great sin, is not really the problem, for there is more mercy in God than there is sin in any and all of us. And God, the second reading tells us, is generous with his mercy. But that we would prefer to not rise out of it, that is truly disastrous. Because to not wish to rise out of our sins is to oppose the will of God for us and his plan for our good our happiness and our eternity. Today's gospel passage is both consoling and challenging. It consoles us with the good news that God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. It challenges us because it reminds us that the human heart, while capable of many great and good things, is also capable of choosing and attaching itself to things not so glorious, preferring darkness and even coming to hate the light. Though the light has come into the world, men have shown they prefer darkness to the light 
because their deeds were evil. God made you and he made me for glory and for eternal life with him. He loves us infinitely. He comes to our rescue when we fall and he desires only what is good for us because we are his children and he is a good father. We are God's work of art. You are God's work of art. And if the light of Christ shines in our life and shines forth from our life, then we live up to that great calling as children of light. The Lenten season provides us with the invitation to examine our lives and see any places where we have allowed the light to be diminished and the shadows to grow. Every one of us, unless we have reached the great sanctity of the great saints, we have shadowy places in our souls. Those darker corners need to be opened up to the Lord so that his light, love and mercy can drive out that darkness, heal and save us. That, after all, was the purpose of the Father sending him. Lord Jesus, you see into the interior of my soul better than I ever could. You are God from God, light from light. I ask you, O Holy Spirit, to search out any place in my life that is still given over to darkness not yet fully given over to the gentle dominion of the Lord Jesus. Without you, Jesus, there is no light in me. With you, there can be no darkness. Jesus, I repent of my deeds of darkness. I give myself to you. I am yours. I choose light, Lord. I choose you. I prefer to be a child of the light, Lord, than to be the ruler of all the earth.